Hello again. Um, so, well, this is just like a generic guy, and let's try to give him like a quick auto rig. Um, I know how to do so, so I have him just on a layer, but uh, there he is. We just hit Shift A for add, or you can go up here again in Armature and say Human Meta Rig Basics. Oh, this is probably the same. Let's do human meta rig. Again, the scale is quite off because in Blender, one unit, did I grid on the floor? One unit is two meters. Um, however, this guy here right now is about one meter eighty tall, which fits in Maya, but doesn't get translated well into Blender, strangely. So that doesn't really matter. Um, we select the rig and just scale up approximately to his height. So with Shift Z, by the way, you can change between the wireframe or it's up here as well. And it is see-through, non-see-through. Okay, let's scale up a bit more. And that's about it. So the rig now is in object mode, and since we scale in object mode, it has um, Right, where is it? And, no, no. Yeah, it has um, obviously a scale value applied. So we want to freeze the transform and we do this by Alt A and say scale. Okay, so the rig comes like quite with quite many bones, even like with a facial setup, um, which you probably don't really want. So in order to edit the rig, we want to go into edit mode of the rig, and there we can adjust the bones to our likings. Um, let's make sure to work in symmetry, so we don't have to work on both sides. So we can, for example, delete the breastbone by X and delete. Just delete that. And we want to keep this head bone last and just get rid of the other one. So I'm, I'm doing the uh, box select like with B and by just dragging you select by B and middle drag you deselect or there's up here as well the default select box and control select um, but I prefer to have it on the tweak option. So let's get rid of those um, and let's get rid of the ears. What is that? This is the spine zero six. This is face. We probably don't need the face as well. Let me just double check because sometimes it breaks the rig or the automatic rig if you delete the wrong bones. Yeah, working fine. Okay, so um, let's position everything where it belongs. Um, Again, let's enable snapping and go on the volume. So we go back to edit mode and just grab and put things to about where we want them. Um, oops. Ah, this is now happening because the rotation center is set to individual origins. So we're going to like medium point in this case. So let's, this is this one. Let's put the thumb into place. Um, that's the thing about tweak because you can just click on it and drag and it instantly moves it. So that's why I actually really like this function or this mode. Because I don't have to. I really want to make sure to grab both of these. Yeah, 
this is obviously a bit of a tedious process, but it's not too bad. Oh, a bit broken finger there. <laughs> Poor guy. And maybe these ones should come in the middle of the hand as well. And let's put this one up as well. Okay, so hand is done, this is done. Check for the neck, yeah, let's leave it like that, should be fine. Um, let's adjust the hips a little bit, bring this out. done and in order to finalize or because this is now really just um, laying out the skeleton and in the meta rig in the rigs tenor armature panel you can say generate rig and this now creates the actual rig with all the constraints and IK FK switches so if you got the rig now, you go into the property panel with here's all sorts of layers so we can enable disable torso, the tweaks for a torso, we can disable the visibility of the fingers, fingers detail, and all sorts of controls. So in order to bind it, it's as we did before. We grab the object. Shift select the armature and do control P and with automatic weights. And there we go. So if we now select the armature and go to pulse mode, we should be able to yeah. um that's the IK. So everything's working fine. Okay, there is the knee because when I did the changes in edit mode, I might have um, destroyed the bone orientation. So that's not great. Um, so you kind of want to be like this by default. And yeah, maybe I can fix this in edit mode quickly. Um, again, select everything with A. Alt G, Alt R, resets it to the bind pose. So let's just try to get rid of the rig um, in object mode. So with X we delete it and let's see the metal rig again. What I did here. Yeah, I think the knees need to be pointing outward a little. Let's try this again. Tight the meta rake. Let's go in pose mode. Yeah, it's the same shit. I did something wrong there. But you get the idea. Maybe like um, it should have been a straight line, the leg. I mean, you're the rigger, you know better. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I mean, it's a very decent, quick setup and gives great results with it in terms of, I mean, there's like need some vertex paint adjustments on the chin here. And also the eyes have no connection because it's a separate object. So let's. Bring the thing to back and go back in object mode and give the eyes maybe the same weight as the head. So what we could try again to do here is actually to select the eyes, 
to data transfer, select the body, vertex data, vertex groups, or layers by name is fine, and generate data layer. Okay, and apply. So that I should now have the same vertex groups as the head in this area. So if you give the eyes the same armature, which is the rig, it should be following. Yeah, there we go. So in this case, probably might want to make sure. I don't look fine. Yeah, because like um, if you go in edit mode and that, uh, it goes back to its default pose because there's actually like the mesh data edit mode. So it ignores any information on top of the object. If you want to see that, you can click on this one and this one. So let's check for the eyes, what they're doing. Um, let's check and work it. Yeah, they are not fully. Plus, they're going to have like all the groups as well. So probably want to but let's make it a lot easier. Copy this name. Say delete all groups. And add a new group. Give it bone name again. And give it a value of one. So now the eyes are fully assigned to the head bone. And this is how quite quite easy really quite fast can adjust or add objects to the rig so if you have like any clothing in order to get the same or transfer purchase data would be the same thing again with the data transfer modifier just make sure apply before you do it um, apply the rig and put the rig on because it can get really slow um, and we are back. So the nice thing about this rig, which I haven't mentioned before, all the bones have bone groups. So these are actually bones which have the shape or custom shapes applied. That's why they come like as spline curves. But there are really just bones. Um, but you can put bones into extra groups. It's like, let's select, let's go in mode. Um, set all these bones, select all extra bones, um, select all IK bones, um, which is quite, quite handy really as well. And yeah, in the IK, so in, in the property panel for each, Control really you have like lots of options like FK, IK, you can IK switch and oh god, all sorts of things really. And yeah, I think that's it about the auto rig, which I mean, as you can see, like in a few minutes, we completely more or less rigged the character basically ready to be animated, which is yeah, quite quite useful. And Mm. Okay, I'll think of something else and maybe there's another video then. See you then. Hello. Um, blend shapes. <laughs> Completely forgot about them. How? Uh, so, basically, continue now where we've been before with this dude and just get rid of everything that was on him. Um, don't need the eyes thing there. So blend shapes in Blender called shape keys and they live as well like an object data panel. So right. Um, when you want to create a blend shape, you just hit the plus button here on the object and it creates a first basis blend shape because blend shapes in Blender is not really a collection of um, separate objects to which um, your main object um, points to. All the modifications, all different shapes, they live in the same object. So if I want to give him a new shape, I would do another shape and call it oh, um, 
Let's just say shape one. And when this is selected and it's on one, it's active, obviously. So, but even there, it needs to be selected and on a value of one in order to modify it because you need to see the shape. So let's just go and scrub more quickly and grab symmetry, push a little bit around. Yep. So this is how Blender sees blend shape. So it's really a modification of the same geometry and not having several geometries there and linking them to this. Um, you can do so though by, let's say, duplicating. And let's quickly uh, it inherits the blend chip. So I'm edit mode since I would be editing this shape right now. It shows me this shape here. So let's get rid of that. Um, do the scarf mode and just do maybe a little bit on the head, whatever. Ah, looks nice. Yeah, beautiful. And so we can transfer, like in Maya, we can transfer this to him as a blend shape. So we would select, I think, this direction. So first what we want to, and then the target, and say on this little arrow down here, join its shapes. So this one now receives the shape as well. And you can also like, let's get rid of this one, Oops. Uh, transfer shapes this way. So let's say you select this one, but this would transfer the selected shape, let's say the basis to this one and say transfer shape key. So now we have, ah, hold on, sorry. What's going on here now? Let me try that again. Transfer shape keys. Yeah, there we go. So that's a base shape key, and that's what we just transferred from here. And so they are visible. When you click on them, you can look at them if the pin symbol is enabled. So once the pin is disabled, you have to literally turn up the shape key. If the pin enabled, you can click through and check them out. Um, nice thing as well is built in editing controls. For example, we want to mirror a shape. So let's disable mirror here, put something there on my one. And here we can say the shape key, we mirror shape key and it mirrors automatically. Um, can mirror it back again. So we can also do a Create duplicate for editing. This is creating a new shape, I think, a new. Yeah, that is. Turn it down. So, a new shape different mix is basically whatever is turned on right now. It's a, both of them. You see, new shape different mix. It takes these two as our shape key. Um, which, yeah, and there's also in the shape key options, it says relative to, so all the shape keys now see the basis as the origin base, but you can, for example, for corrective shapes, you can say relative to um, shape one. So this basic layout, this shape's base shape is shape one because we say it's relative to shape one. 
you can throw the spray turned on. But if we go back to base one, where the base is basically no shape at all. Okay, this is really badly explained right now, but I think you get the idea. So it's just like where it sees the difference. Um, yeah, I think that's really about shape keys. Um, okay, cool. I think I think I don't know what else to say about this one now. So just end it here and maybe gonna record something else. Bye bye. Hello again. So um, one last thing. Um, expression drivers or drivers in general. So in order to let's say for example switch between FK, IK, trigger shapes, whatever, you know, best. <laughs> um, so we continue from where we've been before. So we have like this one shape here right now, which is Marcus would fully agree on that. And let's just say we want to drive the shape with a simple empty. So I'm just going to bring the 3D cursor here. So 3D cursor is with a shift, right click, um, and add an empty. Let's bring it up a little bit. So let's say the empty is going to be our driver to trigger the shape. We will do this by going to the shape key and say right click and add driver. It opens this window, but once you have a way, it disappears, which is super annoying. So there is a driver editor. Um, so in order to bring this window open, you can either in the middle here, right mouse, split, or on this little corner, just drag it open and change it here to drivers. So this is what our driver now would look like if you go with N property panel and go here into drivers. To me, it is very intimidating. I sometimes really don't understand what's exactly going on here, but um, it seems to be quite powerful. So we have here the type of driver. If it's a scripted expression, average values between two values, min, max, you get the idea. And this is the current value of the driver, so it's a zero, that's why there's no shape. That's the expression itself. And these are basically what is driving this shape one right now, the value. So let's say in this case we want the empty to drive the shape. So we pick the empty with the picker, or you can also just like click on this, but have to look for it. So with the Eyedropper is always easiest. So this now says it takes the empties x location in world space, which is in our case 21, the current value. Um, so we want to maybe change it to the z location, maybe local space, doesn't really matter in this case now. And let's say we want to deduct this value right now. So we start with zero. Um, let's just remove. Oops. Ah, come on. One seven eight point zero three four. So now it should be zero. Trial value zero right now. So however, if you move it up a little bit, it triggers a shape. And that's really it. So let's like make it a bit. Less sensitive, one, and the side goes a bit less sensitive. And yeah, I think you can imagine that this can be quite powerful. You actually can also put a script in there, like um, let's say in the text editor. Um, maybe you create like a new script and whatever. And then in the drivers, you can point to the script. So, which is very, very powerful really as well. And I think this is already everything about drivers. 
I can say with it. This is basically the only way in Blender where you can um, modify a value based on another object's value. So since there is no nodes as such, um, this is kind of like how you would do that. Okay, and you. Bye-bye.